Should you buy a Rebel 500? Yeah. Yeah, you should. Hey everyone, I'm a new rider. I've had my license for two months. Riding a beautiful, beautiful day. And I have a Rebel 500. It's a brand new bike. It's got 500 kilometers on it. I'm in Southern Ontario and I can ride uh, almost with a t-shirt on November 11th. But it's actually cold and uh, I, I'm freezing cold. I'm going to give you some tips about how to ride in a Canadian winter. And I mean an Ontario winter. I don't mean like an Alberta winter. I've got friends and family out in Saskatchewan and Alberta. I grew up in Saskatchewan. I know that the winters out there are brutal. And I know that, you know, my nephew has a bike and a license and he's had snow for a month and a half already. I need to give you some tips about riding in the Canadian winter. Layers. Okay, first I've got thick socks and some hiking boots. Uh, next year I'll maybe get some proper boots for my motorcycle, but my hikers are doing well, well enough. On top of the socks, I've got two pairs of long johns. Two, plus some stretchy denim. And then, so those three layers are keeping me just fine. I rode the other day at uh, three degrees Celsius and I was okay. Today, right now is about seven degrees Celsius. I've got a t-shirt on. I need to get some layers on the top. All right, so my first layer on the top is actually an old black jacket that I've had for a bunch of years from Banana Republic of all places. Look at this design. I lucked out. Oh, I gotta move my microphone. This design, I locked out. There's this collar that goes around and tightens up one button or two. I'm gonna put the lower button. And then, so, because one of the problems when you're riding in, in the cold is that you have this wind against your neck under the, under the helmet. And, uh, and your chin gets cold, your neck gets cold. So the temptation is to put a big neck warmer on, but then you have this bulk around your head and you can't shoulder check easily and stuff like that. So this jacket just has this incredible feature. It works great. Uh, you'll see later when I put my helmet on. Next layer is a heavy, heavy cotton sweater. So one thing I like about this sweater is that it's got buttons here. I don't want any bulk around my neck. Is that one hard? Is that hard? The next layer is an armored jacket. Now this one happens to be, uh, I don't know if it's Z1R or ZR, uh, but it's two layers, an inner layer that zips and an outer layer that is armored. It works great, uh, except that the arms can bunch a little. Uh, now I've got some bulk uh, around the arms and under the armpits. Next year I gotta solve this somehow, maybe a different jacket design. Why are you playing in the road? Well, because I have a motorcycle. That's just like playing in a road. Because it's really, really fun. Um, move my microphone here. This jacket is pretty thick. Uh, two layers. It's great in the summer. It breathes well. Um, but in the colder temperatures, it's got that extra layer. And it's big enough that I can fit other layers underneath. Next layer, helmet. Just kidding. This is my Shoei helmet, RFSR. Key feature of this helmet is the pin lock inner layer on that visor. Really important in the cold weather that you can avoid getting fog. This works amazing. Like truly, I'm amazed. I like the vents on the, the forehead and around the chin here. So you can get some air movement through the helmet. Now I'm gonna put it on. After this, the last layer are the gloves. I had to rearrange, get my microphone in place. I don't know if you can hear me well. I've never done this before. One, just regular old leather driving gloves. I find that these are necessary below about four or five degrees Celsius. 
above four or five, I can get away with riding with these. These are armored five gloves. I can get away with these above five or six degrees Celsius on a short enough ride. Now, a little longer ride, your fingers start to get pretty cold. So with all my layers on, I'm gonna go for a little ride. I should have bought a motorcycle 20 years ago.